heavily armed police stood guard during the Greenwich Village Halloween Parade in New York last Tuesday, hours after a deadly terrorist attack in Lower Manhattan. Andres Kudaki Associated Press Did you catch the third issue of Rumia magazine I did, googled my way right to it in seconds. The cover I sent much to look at a grim picture of a bomb bed out high-rise. But the Rumia ons reads it mainly for the articles, like the exclusive transcript on page 4 of an address by Abu Bakr al baghdadi the reclusive Islamic State leader, in which he ranted against the Muslim Brotherhood. The Murtad Brotherhood has emerged as a poisoned spearhead carried by the Crusaders in their war against the Khilafah, he said in a nearly 5,000-word pian to holy war. What really caught my eye, though, was an article with the headline Just Terror Tactics. Beneath a photograph of a Hertz rental truck, the piece read, though being an essential part of modern life, very few actually comprehend the deadly and destructive capability of the motor vehicle and its capacity of reaping large numbers of casualties if used in a premeditated manner. The article went on to give advice on how to leave the longest trail of carnage possible. Why did it catch my eye? Because Sayo Saypov seemed to follow its instructions to the letter in the terrorist attack that left eight people dead in Lower Manhattan on Tuesday, that's why. New York showed remarkable resilience after the attack, moving unflinchingly into its huge Halloween parade hours later, with Gov. Andrew Cuomo and Mayor Bill de Blasio among the costumed revelers. But forgive me if I roll back the tape to examine this latest example of how our media ecosystem can be used against us. I had gone searching for Rumia, ISIS's in-house magazine, after reading yet again how easy it is for a terrorist to find Islamic State or Al-Qaeda content. This comes up again and again in these cases, whether it involves Google or YouTube, Twitter, Facebook or one of the encrypted messaging services, like Telegram and WhatsApp. As the criminal complaint against Mr. Sapov notes, ISIS has disseminated a wide variety of recruiting materials and propaganda through social media. The inadvertent role of tech companies in abetting bad actors is especially salient right now, given that Mr. Sapov's rampage occurred just as a congressional panel was grilling Google, Twitter and Facebook over Russia's campaign to influence the 2016 presidential election through social media. The attack in Manhattan lent fresh urgency to questions arising from the debate over social media's downsides is it time to put limits on speech, sapping the internet's anything-goes ethos or should we accept the occasionally lethal consequences as a cost of freedom? One thing to keep in mind on the Tobe Fair side of the ledger law enforcement officials give the web platforms some credit for making progress against content that encourages terrorism, they've really made great strides in taking these things down, a New York Police Department counterterrorism official, who did not have permission to be quoted by name, told me. Twitter reports that it suspended 300,000 terrorism-related accounts in the first half of the year. A recent study conducted by researchers at Dublin City University found that Twitter caught more than a quarter of the newly created pro ISIS accounts within a few days and around two-thirds of them within 70 days. Facebook has developed new artificial intelligence programs to identify extremist posts, like videos of beheadings and bomb-making manuals, and has hired thousands of human beings to look out for that stuff as well. And YouTube, owned by Google, has instituted a system that responds to search requests for terrorism videos by serving up anti-terrorism messages. It has also developed artificial intelligence systems and created new jobs to fight extremist content. Nonetheless, as Google told me over the weekend in a statement, while we've made good progress, we recognize there's more to do. Last week, I stopped at the desk of my New York Times colleague Rukmani Kalamachi, who covers ISIS and is a leading expert on the relationship between social media and terrorism. She showed me how ISIS-related accounts spring back up under different names quickly after Twitter rubs them out. One such account, from a member who goes by a Swarty Media, taunts Twitter by boasting of the number of times it has regenerated after being shut down, 600 in this case. A recent iteration of the Aswarti account, which Twitter suspended in less than 24 hours, received 700,000 impressions. Hey, it turns out, travels faster than Silicon Valley justice. The terrorists behind such accounts are hard to identify because they often sign into the platforms through virtual private networks, or VPNs, that hide their identities and locations. 
and the social media giant's new security measures have forced some of the terrorist activity onto encrypted services like WhatsApp and Telegram, and file-sharing platforms like Google Drive, where it is harder to track. Terrorism has been around far longer than social media and encrypted file-sharing. Nonetheless, modern terrorism could not be quite what it is without it. The Islamic State has achieved a power of persuasion that we have never seen from any other terrorist group calling for attacks in the United States and elsewhere in the West, Michael S. Smith II, a terrorism analyst and fellow at New America, said in an interview last week. None of that would have been achieved without access to these social networking technologies. If the problem is in view, solutions remain elusive. While testifying at the congressional hearings last week, Mr. Smith seemed to receive a positive response from senators, including Republicans like Lindsey Graham, when he suggested the need for a new legal framework that would compel the tech companies to do more. That is especially hard in the United States, with its still strong First Amendment. The United States cannot, for instance, shut down WhatsApp, which is owned by Facebook, or Telegram, which was founded by a Russian tech entrepreneur, the way Afghanistan did last week in what may have been an effort to disrupt the Taliban. It's hard to see the United States passing a law like the new one in Germany that imposes huge fines on social media platforms that fail to excise hate speech within 24 hours. Stripping anonymity from social media users in some form appears to be where the legal discussion is going here in the United States. Mr. Smith suggested implementing legislation that would compel tech companies to restrict VPN use on their platforms only to those whose identities they know. Floyd Abrams, the noted First Amendment lawyer, told me that some legislation raising the bar on anonymity might pass muster with the Constitution, which was written at a time when, for the most part, we knew who the speakers were. But Corinne McSherry, the legal director at the Electronic Frontier Foundation, warned that such cures may prove worse than the disease. Historically, the right to speak anonymously is how all sorts of disenfranchised groups were able to speak freely, Ms. McSherry said. And, she noted, dissidents throughout the world often use VPNs to gain access to and convey information about government abuse. They will be less inclined to do so if they must disclose their identities, even if only to the tech companies, she said. It gets thornier from here. I haven't even gotten into whether, and if so, how, Google should censor results from its search service, which is, after all, primarily a tool that navigates the Internet as it exists. It could be argued that search engines could block or play down results for terrorist content. But some of this material is posted in the name of academic inquiry, which has helped provide a better understanding of the broader jihadi phenomenon, said Aaron Y. Zellin, who researches jihadist movements at the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. That reminds me, I've got a magazine to get back to. Where was I? Oh, right, page 13, The Excellence of Jihad. Jacqueline Pieser contributed research.